Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about timing belts. So timing belts is very similar to gears in that there's these grooves on the um, pulleys. Um, but the main difference is that instead of the pulleys in contact with each other, you have a belt that's tying the two together. So um, like gears, you could have one smaller uh, pulley and the other side, you could have a bigger one if you want to have a mechanical advantage or a speed reduction. So you could do that as well. Uh, but typically you would use a timing belt and pulley configuration if you want to move your motor away from the output for some reason. Maybe you want like a low inertia system. So you want to move the mass backwards or away from the part that's moving. Um, so that might be one application where you need it. Or you maybe you just don't have room to put the motor, so you want to um, move it away from whatever you're trying to move. So there's different types. You will typically see something called the L series. You have an XL series. There's like H series and a MXL series and T series. But what it really comes down to is um, the material and what's reinforced inside the belt. So you could read here, it says this one is neoprene, uh, <coughs> reinforced with fiberglass. Um, this one is also with fiberglass, but it's gonna be a little bit stronger. And you can see a MXL one says quiet running neoprene is reinforced with high strength fiberglass for use in general purpose drives. And this one here has uh, Kevlar reinforcement. So for the details, you could click in it and then read up on the specs. So this one, um, I opened up a uh, L-series one. And you could read um, here has some information about it. So um, most of these, we're going to, the main thing we'll look at is the pitch. And then based on the pitch, you'll see the number of teeth. So let's say you chose two different sizes, then the gear ratio will be the same ratio as the teeth. So here we're going to take a look at, well, this one is a belt, so you wouldn't choose a different one. But um, the number of teeth is, is going to be directly proportional to how long the belt is given the same pitch. So this one is a 12 inch. Uh, let's click into it. So if you click into it, you could see that um, they'll tell you different uh, properties about it. So this one tells you the width. And they don't really tell you the strength specs for this. Um, so mo most of the time, it'll just be based on experience. Or if you go to a more detailed catalog at a different website, they may give you more information about um, the strength properties. But here, let's just go ahead and download this belt into our belt folder. And then we could look at another corresponding um, the pulley. And you need to have a pulley that has the same pitch. So we'll go ahead and just choose this one. So notice that this one is a press fit and it has a set screw. So we'll go ahead and download this one. So if we open this one up, we see the belt. And then we open this one up, we will get the pulley. And we put it in assembly. This is our belt and this is our pulley. And usually this will ride inside like this. So it'll go in something like that. And the radius of the belt is not always going to line up exactly because in practice, this could stretch. So if we look back here, you can see that um, They'll usually just choose some distance by default. So for this, we got a 12. 
let's actually choose one that's slightly bigger because it'll um, it'll look better in our assembly when we have two pulleys side by side. So we could drag this one in here. And you can see this one's going to be bigger. So we'll suppress this. And you might have another pulley like this. So sometimes it doesn't make sense to um, use their pulleys when you're putting it inside um, an assembly. So in some cases, you may you may just go ahead and draw your own pulley to represent um, the pulley inside. But the idea is that these two pulleys will pull apart sideways until um, this belt here is pretty tight when you try pressing it down. And some manufacturers will give you the exact tension that you want to get. Um, but in practice, it should feel pretty tight. If you ever play guitars, you kind of know what a tight tension feels like. But um, when you press the two uh, sides of the belt down, it should feel some tension. And it should be kind of hard for it, or be based on the diameter of these pulleys, it shouldn't be so loose that when you press down, the, the teeth touch each other. Um, it should slightly collapse a little bit. OK, so here you could see that um, you could have one side that's going to be attached to a motor, for example, and then another side could have an output that's moving. OK, so based on what you're doing, uh, you could assemble it accordingly. And one thing to note is that you will typically need to have uh, one of these pulleys free to move. So you could attach you could attach this pulley onto maybe a block, and you could maybe control it by a thread. And that thread can slide the block right and left so that um, it will it will tension everything. Or you could have a block in the middle here, and then you could either you could have like an idler pulley. So what I mean by that is you could have a third pulley like this, third pulley here, for example, and you could have something that pushes up, and then that can also create tension. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to deal with the tensioning issue, um, but in this case, usually it's going to be easier to maybe just have one of the pulleys slide over and you could pull on it to create tension. And you can see these shafts here have uh, two sus screws to hold on to a shaft. So you could mount that on there. Okay, so in terms of uh, you could go ahead and look at the different types that you need. But here, you also sometimes you'll see plastic ones too if you need um, something that's, you don't need something that's as strong or maybe certain environment requirements, you could choose plastic ones. Okay, so in this video, I'm not going to go into too much detail of the tensioning part. Um, the main thing is I just want to talk about how the mechanism works and you could take a look at how it might be inside uh, assembly. So. The same rule applies for bearings that we talked about in shafts. So you could add bearings on one end, bearings on the other end, and then these timing belts could move um, accordingly with enough support. So you could add those in there inside your assembly. OK, so that summarizes timing belts and pulleys. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.